Greetings and welcome to another Serving the Valley edition here on Channel 15 Cedar Falls Community Television. I'm Eric Braley and on this series we try and spotlight some outstanding service organizations right here in the Cedar Valley and let you know of some opportunities of what you can do either fiscally or joining these clubs to help make our community a better place for all. Joining here us in the first segment is Marty Walsh and Kim Loy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. your roles are also at the state level. You're actively involved in the JCs and have been for a number of years. And Marty, we'll start with you. Just talk about your role and what you're working on at the state level with the JCs. Sure. My role is a regional director, which means that I kind of help the local chapters interact with each other, interact with the state and national organization. Uh, grow their membership, but also help them figure out, well, if this chapter is doing this great project, how can we learn from that and how can we apply that in our own area? Um, that's really part of the JCs being a bottom-up organization. We start with our local chapters, then work to the state, national, international level. So there is a lot of communication between the chapters, the Cedar Falls Waterloo chapter and your chapter, Mason City? Definitely. Yep. And, and whether it's those individual presidents kind of bouncing ideas and getting inspiration from each other or borrowing what we call chairman's planning guide, looking at this is exactly how you can run your fireworks or your boat race across the river or whatever it is that you decide to do. And that's what I love about the JCs. There's always fun events going on. Yes. Why did you join and why are you still an active member of the JCs? Um, I joined because I moved back to the Cedar Valley in 2005 and wanted to get active in the community. Um, fell in love with the projects. I think the fireworks is what got me going. Um, and then from there, I just kind of moved on up and am now on the state level. So talk about your role, and I know you're actively involved in our Cedar Valley yep. Club, but what do you like about interacting with other people and other clubs across the state? Um, it's a great opportunity to um, learn from other people, um, learn what works in their chapter, what hasn't worked, what can we do to improve our chapter. I mean, the networking is invaluable, I think. And it, it's just helping the communities be better. And how often do you meet at the state level with the JCs? Um, the, for the actual chapters, it's three times a year. Um, we do across the state. We just had one in Cedar Falls. We're going to have one in September in Cedar Rapids. Um, and then I think Dubuque is in January. So we kind of try and move it around, um, take our business to different cities in the communities in the area too. Um, and then as a state cabinet, we meet once a month and right. it's just like any other board meeting, just kind of make sure the organization's running smoothly and um, if there's any issues, we try and nip it there. Exactly. And Marty, what I find interesting is a lot of different professions are involved. It's not like you have to just be a banker to be in the JCs. Mm -hmm. uh, how neat is that to see that involvement across all professions? You know, that's one of my favorite things is that we can have a meeting and in our chapter, oddly, we have for architects, which is just kind of this weird thing about Mason mm -hmm. City. But we also have stay-at-home parents. We have people who work for their church, people um, with doctorates, people with a high school diploma. And it really shows that it's not your professional or educational background. If you want to create a local an impact in your local community, you can do that. And the JCs really are a great avenue for that. Well, how are you? Why are you proud of the Cedar Valley uh, organization chapter and the great things that are going on? Even though you don't live here, you see the great work that's going right. on. Right, and that, that's a kind of a neat thing that uh, the JCs has actually done for me. I'm not a native Iowan, but you know, I come and kind of have an outsider's viewpoint of this and seeing what things like the Cedar Valley has done. Um, the My Waterloo Days, Live to Nine, the fireworks, uh, those are all really challenging types of projects mm -hmm. to put on. And people don't always realize uh, how much work goes into those programs. And I have other friends who live in the Cedar Valley who aren't part of the JCs, and to, that they don't have questions, that they see these just <laughs> flawless events going off is always so, so, so impressive. You saw a list on your screen there of the different events that go on uh, with the JCs here in the Cedar Valley. Someone's watching this. The goal of this show is that, hey, maybe I want to be a member of the Cedar Valley JCs, or maybe I want to give some of my time or money. What would you say to that? And we will talk about this more with our other guests here, but why is this such a unique opportunity, and why should someone pick up the phone and call or, or get in touch with you? Well, me personally, I think it's not only, you know, like Marty was saying, it's a bottom-up organization. So we have the state 
or the local chapter, the state level, national, international. So you can network and there's different opportunities to network um, with people in Europe or mm -hmm. in, you know, I think there's chapters, there's over 200,000 members over a hundred different countries wow. in the United or in the world. So, I mean, it's a great networking opportunity. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Marty? Um, I, you know, I, I think Kim really covered a lot of it, and it's our mission statement to create positive, create an impact, create positive change. Um, it's so it's so easy to do that, but also because there are so many different reasons to join. That in itself is a reason. You know, someone might join because they're new to town, but there's somebody else who joined because they want to run that town festival that they've been going to every year since they mm -hmm. were born. Um, and somebody else is there to network and grow their business. And you can have all that happening in the, at the same time, the same place, and that all moves really, really fluidly. Um, but also then when something like um, Typhoon Hayun happened, mm -hmm. because of our global network of JCs, there was a JCs chapter in Tacloban, Philippines, right. that we had an Operation Operation Hope where you could give money in your local chapter and it would get put right in the hands of those people who can make a change on the ground. That's and us. I think that's a really impressive thing. Impacting our communities locally, at the state level, and internationally, right. that's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you look at the JCs, it's also giving you some leadership opportunities. How personally do you benefit being in your current titles, which has a lot of responsibility? Mm -hmm. um, me being a state vice president, um, it's really gotten me to open up. I, once I get to know a person, I'm fine, but it's it's making me get into the situations and opportunities that I'm not used to. So going into a chapter, not knowing anyone, mm -hmm. um, it's just a great opportunity. Um, again, I get to meet all different people throughout the state. So, I mean, it's... Making it, friends and getting a lot of business yes. cards, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> How have you grown? It's a lot of work, it, I know, it, it, the, it, the benefits of being in a leadership role. It is a lot of work, and I think being in, in my particular role as a regional director, I cover chapters from Spencer, and then I also help out in Tecresco, Green, um, but those aren't places that I live. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a very hands-on person. Something that JC's taught me as a local chapter president was you know, how to get, th get in there and get things done. Now, as a regional person, if there's something that needs to be done or a chapter needs help, I can't walk in there and I can't run, run that beer stand for them. I can't <laughs> do it. So it's, it's, in a sense, it's delegating duties, but also kind of that leadership from afar, leadership from behind. Uh, and that's been a great skill to acquire over these last few months and something I hope to develop over the year. Well, in the Cedar Falls, Waterloo area, JCs are everywhere. They're doing a lot of great events, but it's nice to know that doing so much on the state and national level as well. So yep. thanks for joining us. And on our next segment, we'll talk about some of those events. Maybe you've been to a live to nine. Maybe you've seen the fireworks. Well, you can thank the Cedar Valley JCs for that. We'll learn more about that here as Serving the Valley continues here on Channel 15, Cedar Falls Community Television. Are you tired of wondering what you'll find when you open your cable bill each month? We don't think it should be a surprise. Switch to CFU Cable and Internet Service for the best value every day for every customer. CFU Cable brings you a huge HD lineup and our all fiber internet connection is always fast. You get reliable service and friendly local support. Call 268-5283 for free installation today from CFU where every customer gets a great price. Dear CFU, recently we had a home energy audit through your house calls program. The audit gave us information we needed to make good decisions and your rebates helped us upgrade our insulation, air conditioner and furnace. Our thanks to everyone at CFU. Without exception, your employees were helpful, friendly and efficient. We feel lucky to live in a city with a utility service the caliber of CFU. Cedar Falls Utilities, our family serving your family. 
Welcome back to Serving the Valley. Eric Braley here inside the studio as we are learning about the Cedar Valley JCs, an organization that it was Cedar Falls, it was Waterloo, now it's combined to the Cedar Valley JCs doing so much to serve the valley where we live here in Cedar Falls, Waterloo. Joining me on the set here, Agnes Cress and Jordan Alborn, and just why are you members of the Cedar Valley JCs and what do you love about it? Sure, I'll start. Uh, growing up in Eagle Grove, uh, there was a local chapter of the JCs and kind of always saw them doing events in town and you never really knew much about it, but knew that it was um, a lot of good things they did for our community, so something that I want to get involved with myself someday. Uh, so I came here to you and I, graduated, went to work for Farmer State Bank. Uh, the bank was very supportive of us getting involved, uh, you know, get out in the community, make a name for yourself, so on, uh, and, and make an impact. So I knew the fireworks and, and the, the Waterloo Open Golf Tournament and things mm -hmm. like that are kind of things that drew me in that I was interested in helping out with and helping make a positive impact on the community. And the networking and making a lot of lifelong friends is a kind of a side benefit. So. And it's great that your employer supports right. that because it does take time sure. where you might have to, well, I got to leave early to go yep. get something set up. Yeah, so exactly. what about you, Agnes? Um, I'm, I'm actually originally from Waterloo, and it was one of those things I was at an event, and I saw somebody I went to high school with, and I thought, oh my gosh, why am I not more involved? Mm -hmm. So then I just joined and hit the road running and been overly involved ever since. Just wanted to be more of an active citizen. And you, especially as the president leading this organization, how proud are you of what is going on within this organization here in the Cedar Valley? Yeah, it's really exciting um, because there was kind of I was concerned when we changed, you know, the identity of the Waterloo versus Cedar Falls to becoming the Cedar Valley. But we've hit the road running. We've had great membership growth. We have great local sponsors that keep coming after us. So it's good. It's going really well. So let's talk about some of the events that you do visibly in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at your polo there, live to nine. I love attending. I know many people do love attending. How does an idea like that happen? And it's not as easy as just saying, okay, the musicians are there and now it's a done deal. A lot of logistics goes into pulling off a big event like that throughout the summer. Okay. Sure. Yep. I'll touch on, we have uh, different types of projects. We've got management projects and we also have community projects. The management projects uh, are what I'm in charge of this year, and those are our money-making projects. So we have the Live to Nine event, the Waterloo Open Golf Tournament, as well as the Sandbox Drive. Uh, those three events generate money for our community events, which are the fireworks, the uh, gift of giving, and our scholarship. scholarship. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, so yeah, they're on the screen there. Uh, but for the Live to Nine, a lot of planning, a lot of committee meetings in the background. You know, a lot, a lot of times after work, getting together with. Uh, your, your committee trying to, to bring this all together, figure out what mm -hmm. bands to bring in, uh, you know, what entertainment to have there, other things as well. And, and uh, um, in terms of the open, we start planning in December usually for, for the next year's open, and there's meetings every month, sometimes multiple times during the month for subcommittee meetings uh, to try and, and bring in, make the event as big and as successful as it has been for several years. And we have a lot of great supporters uh, of the event, uh, local businesses that have been in year in and year out, and we really appreciate their, uh, their continued support. Uh, and then uh, it's really cool to be able to give away $55,000 to a professional golfer uh, and a lot of support from the Molinero family as well uh, to help out with that uh, over the years. Uh, and then the, uh, the third event there, the Sandbox Drive in May, we get together and we build uh, some sandboxes basically and, and advertise well, leading up to that, about a month or so leading up to that. And local businesses here in town, we deliver the sandboxes as well as a sand. Uh, and um, it's really cool when you get the, you know, pull in with the truck full of sand in the <laughs> box and the kids are sitting there, you know, just really excited, ready to get in that sandbox before you even have it, you know, down in, in the sand in the box. So those three events kind of lead into, we make our money for three events that Agnes will talk about. Yeah. And, and, and it's neat because they're so unique and different type of events. I might just help out with Live to Nine, but someone else is stepping up and helping out with some of the other events there. Correct, yeah, it's good to have that variety, not mm -hmm. only just to make different money to approach different customers, so to say, but actually for our members to have, if they have an interest, to be a part of that. And then hopefully we make a profit on those three events to help with our community events, which would be the fireworks, um, our scholarship and our annual gift of giving. Our, our fireworks, obviously, it's a big party we throw on the 4th of July weekend, um, which is fun. I mean, who gets to throw <laughs> the biggest party in the Cedar Valley for free? I mean, there's no buttons, no nothing. There's just free admission to come see free music and, of course, a fireworks show. Um, our annual gift of giving event is where we take about 90 at-risk kids um, shopping, and they buy gifts for other 
uh, members of their family. So they learn the actual art of giving and that's our most popular, we have the most participation with our membership by that because it's instant gratification to see you know, a child impacted and that we give an annual scholarship out to mm -hmm. a, a kid that's um, graduated from an Iowa Cedar Valley High School and that's going to attend an Iowa school. And these are just great ideas, uh, I'm sure, with especially how large the Cedar Valley JCs are, some club member might have an idea, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could do this organization? And, you know, it's hard to look in the crystal ball and say in 10 years will Live to Nine still be here or will there be other events in its place? How open are you to just trying to find ways to connect and serve the Valley here? Um, really good. And actually, this year, we're looking at our signature events this year, and we're actually seeing how we can have more of a community impact. Mm -hmm. So, for example, at Live to Nine, we are going to have a, like, a nonprofit that we're featuring. So they might have a tent, or they might help us volunteer to serve beer, but it's them giving an opportunity to market themselves to a different audience. We partnered with the Black Hawk County Solid Waste Management, and we have the recycle bins out there. So Great. not only are we providing green and encouraging, you know, and more money, I guess, sure, we raised sure. for that. But that sure. money actually can get collected, goes to um, another local nonprofit, the Junior Warhawks, because they help donate mm -hmm. their time by picking up the trash and setting up the fence. So that actually is another way for them to generate money. And, so. and it's great because, again, with this program, we're hoping that you hear about a service organization like the JCs. They need members. They need members that are physically giving time and of talents to make these events possible. But you need sponsors as well, and you need businesses to say, okay, yes, I'd like to help make these a reality. How important is that piece of the puzzle to pulling off the fireworks or one of these many great events? It's, it's critical, uh, Eric. Basically, when we get to, uh, you know, down to it, the, everything costs money to run. Mm -hmm. So our budget for the Wild Open is about two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And you know some of that is entry fees and whatnot from the professional golfers and the amateur golfers that are coming to play in the event. But a lot of that has to do with the financial support from our, our local businesses I mentioned a little bit ago. Um, so without their continued support, we basically just wouldn't be able to put these events on and uh, could have a negative impact long term on, on the community. The quality of life may not be as good as it is. Sure. Uh, now here in the Cedar Valley. Well, it'd be sad if we didn't have fireworks yeah. on the 4th of July. So right. we're thankful that the JCs mm -hmm. step up and take that uh, responsibility on. We talked about within the last year or two combining Cedar Falls and Waterloo JCs. How strong is your organization and why is that great to, you know, work across the entire valley for the JCs? Um, I, go ahead. Well, uh, it just makes sense from a standpoint where, you know, 10 or so years ago, the Chambers and the Alliances, you know, merged together, uh, and the JCs are the junior chambers. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as opposed to us, you know, fighting for those same sponsors for our different events, we used to have a fireworks in Cedar Falls and one in Waterloo. Uh, you know, now there's one. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the you know, camaraderie between, you know, and members, I guess. A lot of us work in businesses, we see each other on a regular basis anyway, so it just it makes a lot more sense to work more collaboratively than, mm -hmm. you know, kind of uh, against each other. Yeah. And I was going to say, personally, um, since I'm from Waterloo, I never had a reason to go to Cedar Falls as much, but mm -hmm. being on the Live to Nine committee, I've had to deal with uh, the City Hall of Cedar Falls, mm -hmm. different officials that I never would have. So that's a personal way I got to, you know, develop as a leader and broaden my networking opportunities because I never had a need just being from Waterloo. So that was really the best thing about joining chapters was forcing me into something I probably sure. would have never done. <laughs> exactly. So. Well, we just have a couple minutes left of this segment. And in the previous segment, we talked to the state director. And, mm -hmm. and really, across the state, JC's doing a lot of great things. But looking what you do here um, in Cedar Falls, Waterloo, how proud are you? When you take a step back and see the number of people that are impacted, the amount of money you're giving out and making these events, why is it a, a pride thing? And you can compare yourself to other chapters across the state, but you're really doing a, a great service here. Yeah, we were actually number one last year in the state of Iowa for the chapter. So the state of Iowa recognized um, us as being, you know, top membership, top approving our projects. And so that was really exciting and proud because you know we, we don't do it for awards or plaques we mm -hmm. simply just do it so we have a positive impact in our community so yeah. but it's, it's nice to get a pat on the back every once in a while and <laughs> a lot of late nights you know in those community planning meetings I talked about you know and then getting to sit there uh, I was a chair of the fireworks a few years ago uh, on the um, Park Avenue Bridge and mm -hmm. and uh, Waterloo and just sitting there you know, looking up in the night sky and knowing that you basically are responsible for putting that on is a pretty neat feeling. Right. So. Very good. Well, we appreciate all that you do for our community, and uh, we'll be back with our final segment here as we talk about more reasons why the Cedar Valley JCs need your help 
here and need more members to continue to do a lot of great things. Back with that final segment here on Serving the Valley right after this. Dear CFU, recently we had a home energy audit through your house calls program. The audit gave us information we needed to make good decisions and your rebates helped us upgrade our insulation, air conditioner and furnace. Our thanks to everyone at CFU. Without exception, your employees were helpful, friendly and efficient. We feel lucky to live in a city with a utility service the caliber of CFU. Cedar Falls Utilities, our family serving your family. Dear CFU, we had Rick out today to inspect our gas furnace and fireplace. He noticed the fireplace logs were installed wrong back when our condo was built and fixed them. Then he installed my new furnace filter, which usually takes me half an hour and a few choice words I learned in Cleveland. If all of your employees are like Rick, you have a great team. Thanks for the great service. Cedar Falls Utilities, our family serving your family. Thanks for joining us here on Serving the Valley. Again, it's a TV series uh, spotlighting great service organizations right here in the Cedar Valley. In our final segment here, we're talking with Lauren Gardner and Nate Nims, active members of the Cedar Valley uh, JCs. And we'll start with you, Nate. You joined in December. What was the trigger for you? Why did you decide you wanted to become a member? And what's it been like for you since joining recently? Well, I moved to town about a year ago, came to Waterloo from Fairfield for a job, and once I felt I got settled into my job and career here, I wanted to get to know the community a little more and meet people beyond those that I was working with. So I was looking at different agencies or groups to be a part of that I could have some fun with and also make a dif difference in the community with. And so the JCs lined up with that pretty well and joined this past December. And Lauren, I know you've been an active community member for a long time. Why is this a good fit for you? Um, well, other than getting a chance to reconnect with you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like the other panelists said, I was really looking for something to give back to the community. I deal with a lot of people every day in my, in my occupation. And um, at the end of the day, you want to be able to say, yeah, I'm giving something back. And when I surveyed the groups out there, this was the one that gave me the most opportunity. A lot of times I use the example, it's like church. There's... You know, you can go all the time, mm -hmm. but, or you can be involved. And, you know, with the JCs, they give you a lot of opportunities to be involved. Well, throughout the show, we've talked about many different service projects, events that the JCs put on. What are some of your favorite events that the, the local chapter does, and what do you like helping out with? Mm -hmm. Well, I like doing the, the Friday after work. Those are fun. We do that the fourth Friday of the month, and we'll meet at a different bar or restaurant around town and just sort of relax after you know the end of the work week and the end of the month and wind down and get to spend some time with one another again and just decompress mm -hmm. and let that go and then on our, our Tuesday meetings the second Tuesday of every month we we travel around and we'll meet at a different coffee shop or business in town and we'll get to know what the business does how they set up and then we'll have our our meeting as well and so some of us meet at noon and we have another meeting that same day at 5 30 so anyone in the organization can really come and interact with that. There are many reasons why to be involved. Um, what is maybe some of your favorite parts about being a, a member? Um, I think just the networking and getting to meet so many people around the community. Mm -hmm. um, as VP of membership, I'm, I'm given the, uh, the opportunity and the privilege to just reach out to tons of people. And it's amazing when you send an email or you give a call when you're saying you're with the JCs, you get a response back. Sure. <laughs> and um, I've gotten a chance to have a lot of coffees and lunches um, at local establishments. Um, in the area, they just get to meet with people who want to make a positive impact, and from there, aligning them with, okay, you're good suited to be on the fireworks committee, or this gift mm -hmm. of giving that we have in December, this is right up your alley when we're talking. And so kind of plugging people into the right places is something that I really get kind of a kick out of. That's wonderful. Again, we're talking the Cedar Valley JCs doing so much for our community here in the Cedar Valley. But you're 
it's not like you have to be a business owner to be in the JCs. You can be involved at many different levels, and a variety of people are members of the Cedar Valley JCs, correct? Right, and we're, we're really a community of young professionals. So 21 to 40 is our age range that we uh, have membership, and we just love that new blood. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's something I read that the worst phrase in a business is we've always done it that way. Yeah. And that's what we love about the JCs when we get somebody new mm -hmm. like Nate that can just have new ideas and we can say, wow, we've never even thought about that. So why wouldn't we try that? Um, mm -hmm. And I know this year the Open has made a couple changes um, that, you know, yeah, the Open's the oldest golf tournament in Iowa, but we changed a couple things this year <laughs> and it, it's for the better. And you, you can't be scared to, to try new things. And that's what's fun about the JCs is you have the fireworks, you have the, you know, many different ways. Well, why will you be a member for many years? Again, you're relatively new. You're mm -hmm. one of the newest. Why is it something that, you, hey, you know, five, six, ten years down the road, you'll be here and maybe you'll, you'll tell your neighbor, you'll tell, tell a coworker and bring them into the group? Yeah, it's 11 years till I'm 40. So I've got 11, <laughs> 11 go. years left to go with this organization. So that feels good. Uh, but I like, you know, the involvement in the community and knowing that we can make a difference. And you get to see how a difference is made, um, especially with that gift of giving. You, you see the kid's face and you know that they're taking enjoyment out of something that they wouldn't otherwise have. A lot of us have been blessed in a number of ways. And to be able to pass that on to someone else and know you're making a, a difference in a child's life and in the community, there's nothing better than that. And for you, being in a leadership role, uh, being in this role for many years to come? Yeah, and uh, the one of the things I love is being able to talk to, when you said not business owners, sorry, is we love getting the new employees. Um, mm -hmm. And it's such a um, beneficial thing for employers to have their employees be members because we teach them so many leadership skills and valuable lessons on how to network and how to interact and um, the state um, conventions and things that Kim was um, mentioning a while back. Um, just how to interact with other groups in a socially responsible way and um, but use it hopefully for the benefit of your business or your community. So the JC's internationally helping to better our world at the state level helping to better our great state of Iowa and locally now combined Cedar Falls and Waterloo JC's putting on so many events and doing so many things but they need your help they need funding from businesses as well, and there's a great opportunity to do that to help make the Cedar Valley a better place for all by being a member of the Cedar Valley JCs. Thanks for stopping by, and I appreciate it because <laughs> I go to you know the fireworks, the live denying, and a lot of these yeah. events. And if you weren't doing it, if your organization wasn't, um, then I wouldn't be able to take part of it. So I greatly do appreciate it. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, that will put the wraps on another Serving the Valley. We thank you so much for tuning in. Again, this series puts a spotlight on many different service organizations that you can actively be involved in to help make our community a better place for all. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.